Good morning, everybody. Wow. I'm on time. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> it must not be Monday. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you on this beautiful Friday? My name is Terry Harden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. And every Friday is Ask Me Anything Friday. Usually at the top before I get to your questions and please post them in the comments or post them in the comments, depending on whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, and I will answer them. So I am Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. I said that. I've also, I'm also a Jim Henson puppeteer, a fully trademarked artist. And I travel the world speaking and teaching you how to make a living doing what you love. In many cases, people want to know how to be an Imagineer. I am an artist. How do I monetize it? I have other passions. Definition of an artist is what are you passionate about? And if you are passionate about what you do, you are too an artist, okay? I always give the example of uh, two cleaning ladies who will come and clean my house and when they clean it, it is better than when I bought it. These are true artists in their industry. So no matter what your industry, if you're passionate about it, it's not just a job to you. That makes you an artist. So welcome. How the heck are you today? I'm happy because it's not Monday. <laughs> Monday really messed with me. Uh, this week. And those of you who tuned in know exactly what I mean. I was very late. And that is because we were having a challenge getting through and on the social media platforms. It happens. You have to say to yourself very kindly to yourself, hey, now, right? You have to say, hey, now, here we are in a situation. And uh, 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 you just roll with the punches. I can I, the fact that I can speak on this platform all the way across the globe to India, to Australia, to the UK, this is a cool thing. And anywhere in the United States, I mean, come on, when it glitches once in a while, you just got to be patient and just keep, just don't quit. Okay. But I am glad it's Friday. So, uh, Welcome, everybody. And uh, I see that Stephen Golden's in the house. Stephen is a member of the tribe. Stephen, be sure to take a look at that email if you did not get that email that is, invites you to the tribe and ask to be a member of the private Facebook page because we want to see you and we'd love to see you on the Zoom call. Okay. So, yeah, post those questions as I update you. So we're going to talk today about what if. What if. I should really make that, you know, that might be the what if the sky were blue? Oh, it is blue. What if it was green? What if it was yellow? But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the new series that is on Disney Plus. And we'll get to that. Uh, uh, we'll, well, we can talk about it right now. One of the things I'd love for you to post to me in the comments is, uh, did you like it? My husband informs me. And for those of you who know me, I'm not a Marvelite. I'm not a Marvel person. Okay. Uh, so every Marvel thing that drops, he's got to watch because he is a Marvelite. And so the minute it pops up from Disney Plus, he's alerted. I'm going to take a load off. I'm going to sit for a little bit. I have two ah, virtual speaking gigs I have to do today. So uh, might as well rest up because I like to stand when I speak. I don't know how you guys feel about it if you're speaking in front of an audience. Sitting down sometimes saps the energy out of you. Of course, if it's me, that never happens. But uh, <laughs> but it can. So uh, sometimes I'll sit so that if it's a small group, they don't have to keep going like this, like they're watching a tennis match, because I do walk a lot when I'm talking. So if I want to stay put, I stay, I sit myself down so that I won't walk around and make you guys all do this if it's a small theater. If it's a big theater, I don't like sitting because people over way over here, you've been there, you're in the side seats and you speaker never works, you know, never, never looks at you, which is something that I like to have happening. Anyway, I digress. What if my husband informs me is an old series that I don't know if it was ever like TV or broadcast, but it was a series that Marvel delved into, dipped into, and would change things up a little bit, switch things around. And uh, uh, that is kind of that's, that's, I thought it was a cool idea, actually. 
what if things were not the way that the Marvel Universe originally depicts them? And I'm not going to give you spoilers, but you saw the poster. And if you saw the poster on my thumbnail, you see that there is a woman on the cover and she's super buff. Um, a lot of people are saying that the female head looks like it just went on a man's body. I have to agree. But my feeling is with this series is that they wanted to produce it, but they didn't want to, how to say this delicately, spend a ton of money on it. I think the art is very beautiful. Marvel never seems to have a problem with drawing well, except that it looks like maybe a guy drew the lead character in the first episode that dropped. And so I don't want to say he just put a woman's head on a male body, but it does have that feel. And I, I think if he had just taken a little more time or whoever the artist was, was able to take a little more time, they could have done more, but their hands might've been tied. This bothered me as well. Many people on social media were complaining about this, you know, really, but uh, I looked away from that and uh, just tried to see the story because I'm really looking for story. Now, some said there wasn't much story, but since I am not a Marvelite, I am learning this stuff fresh all the time. So I found that first story pretty interesting. One of the things I did like about the series without spoiling it, I don't think this will spoil it, forgive me if it does, is that uh, they do a really nice Disney thing. And that is that they know that Marvel is about, you know, punch, pow, zap, zap, web, wh whatever it is, right? But in this case, if they use a firearm or they use a weapon, the uh, actual hitting, if it's a human being that's hit, uh, is below the uh, frame so that kids can watch it. And I noticed that right away. And I want to uh, applaud them for that. Okay, because now kids can watch it. And uh, you see the, the guns discharging, but the hits are below or any kind of that sort of thing is below. It's not Akira. Okay, which is like just the opposite. And you're, you go like this to your children. Why did I tune this in? So um, so I, I'm impressed by that. But I'd love to hear your opinion about what you thought about it. Each individual episode is a different what if. So it's not going, you know, it's a little vignette that's approximately, what is it, guys? 30 minutes, a little over 30 minutes. So it's a little what if, uh, quick, quick. Uh, show animated and then it will go next time to another what if so each one is a different what if much like the behind the attractions where each one is a different attraction so I hope you can tell me whether you like it or you don't it's pretty cool and uh, I also want to share with you today those of you who are just joining me I want to remind you about my uh, pumpkin book I have uh, illustrated a pumpkin book. And what I would like to do, rather than show you just the book, is to show you that I, pardon me, that's my shake, uh, I got busy and worked a little on my website. So I'd like to show you the website. Now, I am not taking total credit for the website. This website is done by a designer friend of mine. This is actually the previous older version. It's very cute and sweet. But we are taking baby steps because life happens. And life happens for you, me, and my web designers. So I told her, let's take a zen breath and let's do a little bit, little bit, little bit as we need it. And then when she has some free time bust open, we can really go hard, you know, go quickly. So this will, this front page could change, but I'll let you guys all know. But I want to draw your attention to... Uh, the very top, where the heck is it? Oh, that's so funny because now it's, it's, it's not here. So let me cut out. <laughs> Trying to make it, you see, you see, you just got to give yourself uh, um, a little breath and then you, you just got to say, you know, I'm going to just see if I refresh it, if it, if it, there we go. I have no idea how that happened, but let's try that again. 
just patience, patience, patience. So I wanted to show you here at the top above my head, you will see the words, new book, new book, new book. And all you do is tap that and it takes you to the new book, the new book. Whoops. <laughs> there it is, the new book. And we've done something super easy for you. You go to terryharden.com, you click on new book at the top bar there where I showed you and look, ma, just tap that button and you get it for the pre-sale price of $18. If you are going to be at the Disneyana fan club show and sale, you can pick it up at the show and sale. So order it, but don't pay shipping. If later you don't make it, you can always reach out to me and I'll charge you for shipping, okay? But right now, if you think you're going to be in an event where I'm going to be at, you can just pick it up. This pre-sale goes till September 10th at midnight. And I will uh, get my web designer to put that in. That was just decided by the author. I illustrated, I did the line drawings and my author, as you can see down here, she colored it and she wrote it. So it's our first hardbound book made in the USA. It's a beautiful book. You can see me posing here, the size of the book. Uh, the color is kind of off, but that's okay. The color's more like on the screen above it. But uh, if you want this book, you simply click that button. If you want more as a, as a Halloween gift, and who doesn't like gifts at Halloween or even Christmas, this is the book for you. It's fun. It's sweet. It's stitched. It's made in the USA. It's a hardcover book, and it's autographed by myself, and if possible, the author as well. Uh, we live on different coasts, so that's a 50-50 chance of happening. But uh, if not, you know, when she's in town, maybe we'll get you guys together uh, and uh, you can get the other signature. But the point is, is that you'll have mine. And this little book is super sweet. $18 is a steal. After September 10th at midnight, it goes up to its retail price of $22.95. Or if you see me at an event, it will be $20. Okay? That's a lot of information to tell you, isn't it? Yeah. But... I had to tell you about it. Why? Because I want everyone to have the opportunity to get it at a super good deal. It's my first children's book. It's my first uh, book that has my illustrations in a hardcover version. So uh, there's a lot of firsts in this book. It's the first one that my friend and author Lynette Eklund has written and it's published. So uh, get them while they're hot, gang. Get them while they're hot. We'll take good care of you and uh, send it to you. So there you go. Uh, that is mainly what I wanted to tell you about. I also wanted to tell you that I mentioned that I'm speaking at two different places this time. And one of the places that I'm speaking is you may have seen the amazing Tim Gillette pop in in the comments and say hello to you all. Tim Gillette is the one that made it so that I could have different camera angles like so to talk to you. Uh, he helped me to understand how to make certain things happen, plus this amazing platform known as StreamYard so that my mouth syncs up, everything works, and I can just jump from camera to camera to make it entertaining for you. These are some of the things that Tim Gillette makes uh, happen. Well, he's doing a virtual event and I will be speaking from 8.55 in the morning Pacific time to 9.20 or somewhere in there. Just about 20 minutes of talking, uh, uh, talking about Patreon, but um, there's lots of good speakers there about you and coaching and all kinds of stuff. And all you do for that is to go to Simple Easy simple easy uh marketing events or simple easy events.com simple easy events.com and you're gonna see this page and you're gonna scroll down and tickets are available you'll notice here twenty dollars for a ticket allows you access to every one of his events he does one every month so you'll get to see his future events and then also your access to the videos of all those events including this one that happens this Saturday. But I wanted to do this for him because he was a big help to me. And, uh, uh, you know, you can go there, $20 just, 
you know, he does them every single month. So once you pay your $20, you get those for the year. So I uh, wanted to do that shout out for him. And now we'll get to it. We'll get to your questions. We'll talk more about that. We can talk about annual passes. Remember, August 25th is when you get to buy an annual pass to Disneyland. Um, so that probably Walt Disney World too. I don't know. If you know, put that in the comments. Uh, if Walt Disney World is going to do the same kind of a launchy, launchy thing. But uh but uh, there you have it. Isn't that exciting? That's super exciting. If you want to join Terry's tribe, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash Terry Harden. And uh, that is here, right here, patreon.com slash Terry Harden. And, and uh, for $5 a month, $60 a year, that's the base level you join. You can be a part of it. And uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. People helping people with everything from putting arms around you. If you've lost something special, someone special, uh, you're missing Disneyland, you want to talk about uh, how to monetize a couple of things, it's all there. And I sit in on them. And uh, so there you have it, okay? Commercial over. <laughs> but listen, okay? Some people may think when they're, when they're on live that, uh, uh, you know, commercial, they don't wanna do a commercial. They don't wanna say subscribe to my channel my YouTube channel, please do, do this, do this, do this. But you know, if you don't know what you don't know, how are you going to know? And that's the way I look at it. You know, if you came to an event or you went to my store on your own and you saw the book was twenty two ninety five, and somebody said, well, you know, there was a big pre-sale and you didn't know about it. Wouldn't you be a little sad? So I want to make sure you know that if you want this book for family, friends, schools, or whatever, that you want to get it at the best deal and the $18 is the best deal. Unless you want to buy it in bulk, then reach out to me and we'll talk about it, okay? Don't know if it'll be better than $18, but I'll work with you, okay? That's what I'm saying. So that's why I tell you about things like Patreon and I tell you about things like the book, et cetera, et cetera, and Tim Gillette's Simple Easy Marketing because you may be wanting to do a blog. You may be wanting to learn about podcasting. You may want to coach. You may want to teach online. He's the one that can help you do it. He helped me to do it, okay? And I have to have it. I don't want to say the words dumbed down. Oh, I just did. But what I mean is I need someone to make it super simple, simple, easy. And he does. So for $20, it really is a good deal. The more you watch, the more you saving per, per virtual presentation, aren't you? And I'll be speaking on Patreon. If you're curious about maybe opening a Patreon page of your own, uh, this would be the time to learn about it on Simple Easy Marketing, simpleeasyevents.com. Click on it and then they will let you know. But I'm very early tomorrow morning because it's a Saturday and I don't know if I can stay for the entire event because I am, uh, there's a lot going on. There's just a lot going on. I, I have a mission and I, what I think I'm going to do is listen to it while I work. I'll be listening. I don't know how much I'll watch, but I definitely will be listening uh, after I speak. So I just wanted to encourage you all to do it. All right. I know. Get to the comments, girlfriend. And so here we go. Stephen Golden. A gracious good Friday on the 24th. So again, Stephen, look for that email. If you didn't get the email, reach out to me. I'll send you the welcome email. Stephen just joined our Patreon page and we are really eager to uh, for him to go to the private Facebook group and introduce himself and also be a part of our Zoom calls because we want to know about him. So thank you for joining. Bob Berdeen is in the house. I would like to say the Patreon page is really awesome. We have a great time together and uh, it's true. It's really true. It's a lot of fun. You may have an idea of what this page is going to be, and then it just does its own thing, which is kind of fun organically. It's kind of fun. Joshua Smith, what was your favorite Jim Henson or non-Jim Henson show production while puppeteering? In other words, which one did I do? Oh, there's, 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 there's so many. But I will use this opportunity to tell you about one, Joshua, that many don't know it is on it was on it was a while back and it came out on ready for it vhs many of you still have your vhs uh cassettes don't you and a vhs cassette player don't you uh but now it's dvds of course but uh those of you who are listening who don't know what vhs are google it and we will you know 
then you'll know what it is. But uh, it was called Muppet Mini Classics. And the reason I enjoyed it was because it was silly and funny. It was doing classic fairy tale type stuff. And uh, I didn't get to play any lead characters. But it was one of my favorite because they gave me this horse. And I got to be in the background and do silly stuff with the horse at various intervals. And I really, really enjoyed it. Before Jim Henson found me, uh, I was on the West Coast. He was on the East Coast. And uh, I was on the West Coast performing with all of the top puppeteers on the West Coast. And a lot of the times I was given leads. Now, many of you would go, wow, that sounds cool. Lots of lines. But the leads can be, leads are cool, but they're not as fun as being, in my opinion, let me just say that. And this is my channel. So uh, there's no catalytic converter on my mouth. So if it offends, just give it a few minutes and I'll unoffend. Or if it does, you know, I apologize in advance. But I'm going to tell you the straight truth, the naked truth, of the, if you want. Just ba-bam right out to you, okay? And um, so I uh, uh, loved doing this um, puppet stuff with Jim Henson, but when I, and I kind of, let me see, let me just take a minute because I just lost my train of thought of what I was actually going to tell you. But, oh, that leads are, are in my opinion, can be boring. So they're fun. They're interesting. I love doing leads, but I was always doing leads. And I was looking at the character actors on the side who seem to have more fun. Okay. Even if you take the Muppet show, don't you think that Rizzo Rat has a lot more fun than Kermit? Kermit has fun, but he has to kind of keep the boat sailing. Even Fozzie Bear has more fun. Sidekicks always have a little more freedom and I've always uh, loved the sidekicks. Uh, I love Kermit the Frog. Don't get me wrong. He does some really cool stuff too. But I just thought for me, the sidekicks were often cool, but I was always doing leads but then I met Jim Henson and Jim started casting me and he was always casting me in side performances. And I absolutely loved it, you know, where it was funny for Henson's because they were used to people vying for the leads all the time. And then they met me, Brian, especially met me. And I was kind of like, I'm good. You know, he'd give me a side character where I could do some silly stuff and I was fine. I didn't have to have a character that I identified with. Now, uh, so Mini Classics was one of my favorite because I got to be this goofy horse, which is known as like the goofy horse. The other thing that was really a lot of fun was doing Baby Sinclair uh, for Dinosaurs, the TV show. And you can see this now on Disney+. Plus. What? That was what I said. Wow. Um, thank you. One thing you can thank the pandemic for is they are digging up a lot of shows that I thought were gone forever. And uh, now they're popping up that I was in when I was very, very young. And it's just, it tickles me. It makes me, I mean, you know, if I don't want to thank the pandemic for much, but that, that is uh, something that I never thought I'd see happen. And dinosaurs, I got to be with a, a group of, uh, of uh, wonderful performers, top performers. And uh, we did, uh, I got to do uh, the amazing, perform the amazing and cute and wonderful. Uh, why can't I find it? That is so weird that I don't see it. Am I just, maybe it's in favorites. Just give me a minute because I'd like to show you as well. Oh, goodness, goodness. Here we go. No, it's not in favorites. So let's just take it here. Yeah, it's not there. Mm, there it is. There we go. So I was with this amazing group of performers and we did Baby Sinclair. And I love doing Baby Sinclair. Check out my hair out there. Whoa. <laughs> but anyway, um, there it is. Kevin Clash, John Kennedy, and me. John Kennedy did Eyes and Brows. Kevin did voice and head and face, and I did arms. So uh, if I hide Joshua, well, I can just go back. I'll leave Joshua up there because nice to have the question up there. Whoops, push the wrong button. Yay, but I did baby's arms and I love doing that. I got to rip and tear and hit the daddy and say, not the mama, actually. Kevin said, not the mama. Well, I did the gestures, but uh, those are the two that I really, really enjoyed doing with Henson's. 
I also did Muppet Mini Classics, which I enjoyed because that's the one thing I got to do with Jim. Jim Henson was a part of that, and I got to actually work with Jim Henson. So that was a lot of fun, too. Thank you for the question, Joshua. Did you expect such a long answer? Welcome to Terry Harden's World. Friday the 13th. Yes, I know. And that's why I, was, I, I wasn't I was sure what the day was going to bring me, Stephen. Uh, Friday the 13th is a good day for me. But the ghosts sometimes start to, to start to do their thing, don't they? And uh, trying to find a place to put my shake. Um, I haven't had a taste of the cup of tea all day. But I love Friday the 13th. I really, really do. But I didn't know if the ghosts were going to be doing their thing today. So luckily they weren't. Hello, Cheryl Sawyer. Greetings from your Canadian pal. I'm so excited to finally tell you I'm... Oh, Cheryl, congratulations. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, congratulations. Uh, birthday month will be when? February? March? April? Somewhere near? My math is terrible. But I am so happy for you. Congratulations. And uh, how nice of you to share it with me here. That is very kind of you. Jacob Gardner, Friday, I'm eating a Big Mac while watching this. <laughs> oh, Jacob, you're so cute. That's adorable. Uh, and, and Jacob points out he's eating a Big Mac while watching this. Uh, Ted Lasso drops tonight, and that's my favorite show. Those of you who have known me and heard from me, I've told you about Ted Lasso on Apple TV. Apple TV may not have much. Your opinion, maybe, I don't know. My opinion is uh, it has a couple things, but what it really has is Ted Lasso. So uh, I'm subscribing to it to watch the episodes drop. They drop every Friday. Thank you, Leo Holzer, at midnight, but I don't watch them at midnight. Uh, I watch them either Friday evening or Saturday because I watch them with my husband. My husband says, oh, you can always watch them because he knows I watch the episodes over and over and over and over and over again because I love the show. But I like the first time to be sitting with my husband. And as he says, eating a Big Mac while watching this, I have to dress in my jersey. So I put my jersey on. We get all snuggly, get the popcorn, and watch those episodes of Ted Lasso. What do you do? Do you dress up and watch movies and TV while you're kind of sort of getting back into the world? It would be cool to hear if that's what you do. Let me know. Okay, but uh, I love getting in the spirit. So Big Mac sounds like the Mac attack is a great way to start to uh, do that and view this. And thank you for sharing, Jacob. Uh, Michael says, good morning to one and all. Uh, Michael, Michael is our cachet expert, stamp expert uh, extraordinaire. And uh, he pops in, as you've probably seen him, he pops in and says, hey, what's up? And then he, he leaves because he's so busy. Uh, doing all kinds of stuff. But uh, this, I think maybe even this weekend is the weekend of the big stamp uh, show where they say contest, cache contest winners. You can meet cache artists. I didn't go this year because of the pandemic. I just thought I wanted to stay home um, for that. I have two other places I have to go in September and another place in October and then another place in November. So I just want to keep it to a minimum this year and in the United States. So I decided, uh, that the stamp show I would watch virtually, they have it broadcast virtually. So we'll be able to watch portions, maybe not the whole thing, but, uh, Michael does that too. And then, you know, who knows, maybe I'll connect with Michael and we'll watch it. We'll see. But anyway, thank you, Michael, for popping in and saying hello. Please have a totally wonderful day, everyone, and a great weekend. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Steven says, Mazel Tov to Cheryl. Yay! Absolutely. Isn't that nice, Cheryl? Everyone here wants you to know that they're thinking about the joy of you bringing a new sparkly, sunny uh, child into the world. How fun for you. I know this has been something you've always uh, wanted and cherished, and, and congratulations to you. Uh, Jacob says, I remember the last time on Friday we were talking about Norman Walkwell and you were going to show me the book on Monday, but I wasn't here. Sorry, no worries. I still can't get to the book just yet. So um, I will try again this coming Monday. 
Last Monday, let me tell you something, Jacob, you didn't show up, but I was late by a lot of time because I could not get on uh, live. It just kept kicking me off and then I'd go on, get on live and it kicked you guys off. So I just kept persevering and the book never happened, but I will work to pull the book out this weekend. I just, uh, this week has been a wild and crazy, very busy week. My husband is on vacation and he hasn't really gotten to take a vacation. We, you know how you have work week, work week, work week, work week. And then you say, I'll take care of it during vacation. And then the list is like a toilet paper roll. Welcome to my life. <laughs> we had to get the cars in. We had doctor's office appointments, dentist appointments, visits with uh, uh, advisors. We are also both 64 and we have to deal with Medicare and uh, Medicare has been sending us tons of paperwork. Do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now. And we're like, ah, you know the scream, ah, that's us. So we're getting advice uh, from people who are older than us on the best way to proceed to understand Medicare and how it is because it needs to happen before my, my husband's birthday. It's just, you know, you get all revved up and, and, and things, it, it's, it's a ton of stuff just things you got to take care of during your vacation for 10 uh, is basically what it is. And uh, on top of all of that, uh, I have two speaking engagements and uh, I want to finish. I want to work on the chess set for Roly. So I'm very, very intent on that. I did, I did break ground. Yay for me, break ground for breaking ground. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I did break ground and I'm very happy that I did. And let's just see what that actually means. Uh, I will uh, keep you guys posted on that, but that's very important to me to get that done uh, because I love Rolly Crump and uh, I want to make sure he's going to be able to see it. So I'm really working on it, but I will get that book. I made a note here to have it for you Monday. So over the weekend, I will dig it out because a lot of the dust a lot of the dust is probably going to settle. Fingers crossed. Please, dust settle. So for the last two days, my husband and I can kind of chill and have a vacation. Our dream is to uh, let him sleep in on Saturday and then um, um, on Sunday get up early and watch the sun rise and have a cup of coffee while we watch, you know, the day begin. On our family date. So that's what we're hoping. But there was just so much happening during this week. Got to pay this. Got to do that. Got to look at this. Got to do that. Got to figure this. Got to balance that. Got to, you know, you know. Pew, 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 pew. So, uh, so I apologize for that, Jacob. Just keep me, just keep on me, Jacob. Don't, don't you worry about keeping, continuing to remind me that I need to take care of that. Okay. Uh, I don't mind you telling me over and over again. The way I describe what if is the retelling of existing Marvel stories. Very good, Cheryl. Butterfly effect type twist as if one moment in time changed and the things that occur after that change. So Cheryl, let me ask you, what do you think? And how did you feel about, so on social media, I'm just going to tell you, a lot of people, women are a bit upset about the look of this particular, and you saw the poster, so I'm not, you know, they just feel like that someone took the head and put it on a male body and sort of made it, you know, but, and I, and I get that. I, I, I guess I even agree with it, Cheryl and everyone else who has seen what if, and if you hadn't go check it out because you may find that, you know, you have the same, but, and at first I had to resist some, uh, feelings that I don't really want to get into until you've seen it. Uh, we can talk about it more after, you know, a couple of other episodes have dropped, but I decided to ignore that and see about story because again, I'm not a Marvelite. I don't know the history and Cheryl, you seem to know the history a bit. Uh, but I like that butterfly effect. I thought it was really cool. I actually enjoyed it. I found it very interesting and the only way I can explain it to you is that some people may not find it so interesting because they may be like me and be a purist. I'm not really keen on Disneyland completely changing the look of Disneyland. Disney, Walt Disney World, yes, okay, fine. 
Disney Paris, uh, Shanghai Disney, Disney Hong Kong, Hong Kong Disney, uh, Tokyo Disney. All of those are welcome to do that. But Disneyland is where Walt walked. So what I like you to do instead is to maybe revamp that which is there. So in the case of the Haunted Mansion, if you've watched behind the attractions, um, the Hatbox Ghost is there. And originally he was going to go in, but it didn't work out. And this amazingly cute and adorable little fella who is apparently uh, a brain at what he does, I have to agree, um, was just obsessed with creating this character and making this character work. And he put it in there and we had the blessing of now having in the Haunted Mansion, the hat box ghost or the bride where the heads of the husbands are missing. I love those changes, those updates, keeping the feel of the Haunted Mansion, but making it more a new little secret. You know, like instead of Mata Leota on a, on a, a stand, her, the ball with her head in it is floating coolness but when you put a star wars ride in disneyland and i am a star wars fanatic okay when you pc the jungle cruise or talk about pcing splash mountain all right i think walt might have done that but honestly you know it's mixed feelings on that okay i understand why they want to do it but i'm not so sure they should Okay, you can't please everybody. You're never going to do it. You know, someone is going to find a bone to pick with your change just as easily as if you didn't change it. You got people that got a bone to pick if you don't change it. You see what I'm saying? So I think if you're a bit of a purist and you're watching what if you may not like the alternative universe, but understand it. I think it's only like a half hour or something, a little over half an hour. It's going to be gone. And then you could never, never have to watch it again. But it's fun to have somebody look inside an alternate reality and show us what do you think? You know, I kind of dug that. I also really, really love the fact that they took care in making sure that the violence was at a level that's kind of, they worked with that. They had to have it, but they wanted it so kids could watch it. And I think they really thought about that. And I'm not used to people doing that. Um, so I was really impressed that Disney did that. You'll also know that the animation is very minimal. If you see the faces, only eyes blink and mouths move. It's not clutch cargo, but it's definitely, and if you don't know what clutch cargo is, Google it. Uh, but it's it's very like the mouths are the only thing animated and the eyes, very minimal animation. And I would imagine they weren't sure or maybe they were sure or maybe they just wanted to be cautious and not spend a ton of money on it, but still give you beautiful art. So those are my opinions. Uh, what do y'all what y'all think? Deanna. Oh, you came back because you. Oh, well, thank you, Deanna, for popping in. Deanna's at the doctor's office uh, getting her foot checked and uh, or if uh, I guess a checkup on the foot because you, they this has been a little bit ongoing. But uh, uh, it was so sweet of you to pop in now. How nice. Jacob says when you uh, when you be doing any visits in Kentucky, would love to meet you. So, Jacob, you bring up a very good point. I don't know if I will actually be in Kentucky. I would love to be in Kentucky, actually. But if you're anywhere near Indiana or possibly uh, Ohio in October, I am doing a book tour with the author of the book that I showed you uh, in, in October in Indiana. And so uh, I will list that on the website and then I will tell you guys about it. It's going to be October. And uh, there, is a there is an event uh, that I will tell you about as soon as I get the update on it. That is very popular. People come to it. It's like, a, it's like, a, it's not a fan club event, but it's like, a, a, it's like a farmer's market type thing, but it's a festival more like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A county fair, but it's one day. And it's booths like, you know, it's like a, you know, people are going to be selling Christmas stuff and people are going to be selling. It's mostly about Halloween. They'll be selling pumpkins and uh, we'll have our book there. Uh, uh, I'll have my DVD to teach you how to do pumpkins, uh, all kinds of cool stuff there. Uh, you might if if you want to make a trek since Kentucky is more 
that side of the continent, as opposed to California, which is on this side of the continent, you might may think about making a trek up there. I'll let you know early enough in case you want to pop up and come and see me. Love to come and see you. I mean, love for you to come and see me. Don't know if I'll be able to come and see you is what I am trying to say. Do I sound a little like a freight train? Slow down. Have a cup of tea. Be calm. I, I I guess I'm on uh, uh, 45 instead of 33 and a third. It used to be what you play records on vinyl. But uh, I'm just stoked because uh, not only is it Friday, but I actually got through my week and got a lot done. And I think you feel very successful when you get a lot done, um, especially since last night I wanted to get more done. And uh, I turned to my husband. We walked through the door after visiting at lunch and my whole body said nap. Um, my husband points out that, you know, when you're in your 60s, all of a sudden sleep in the middle of the day, just a quick little power nap is really good. And so we stretched out and uh, he said he wasn't sleepy. But when I woke up, I said, whoa, I just I just disappeared into the land of Lala. And he said, me, too. So sometimes, you know, there's a reason um, the Mexican people call it siesta. And I got to tell you, thank you for that, because it's a good siesta. I love a siesta. And it really does help me throughout my day to keep myself uh, cognizant in my brain. Just just realize that I'm running at, you know, 45 RPMs and. uh <laughs> and sometimes I should slow down and be at 33 and a third. Uh, Shelby says, hi, hi, happy Friday, the 13th. <laughs> uh, one thing I hope happens in the MCU is that they bring over the X-Men. My favorite is Nightcrawler. Okay. And you see my face saying, okay, because again, um, I'm not familiar. I know about the X-Men. Uh, I know the word X-Men. <laughs> You're probably going, ah! Shelby, it's the truth. Uh, I get them all kind of mixed up, and I'm so grateful. I'm sure if you have anyone in the family who doesn't follow these characters, uh, to, you, you help them to kind of get through it. My husband did. So... Uh, when um, WandaVision came in, I f came on the Disney Plus, I went nuts over WandaVision. I thought that was one of the best shows. I still think it's one of the best shows uh, ever created. But my husband had to tell me, true story, who and what Vision was. Because I had gone and seen, um, is it Endgame? And I saw the relationship between those two characters, but I didn't really understand that relationship. It was okay during that movie because I'm a big fan of Guardians of the Galaxy. I've become that. And I love Rocket. So as long as Rocket's on the screen, I really don't care who else is on there. Seriously. So my husband has to explain when certain characters are isolated and featured as Vision and uh, Wanda were. And then I asked him about Wanda. I said, I don't remember them calling her Wanda. And they said, well, yeah, they kind of do, but she's also the Scarlet Witch. And I was like the dog in front of the, you know, uh, you know, your dog doesn't quite understand what's going on with you. Well, that was me. Uh? So I'm very grateful for people to explain their characters uh, that they love to me. So uh, I will look for Nightcrawler and I hope that they do this because I'm curious. I'm always curious about new characters. Do I love all the new characters? No, I am not. I will tell you and some of you will be like, I, 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 you know, Disney dropped the show Loki. They, they, that fell onto the, into their viewing and I, I just couldn't get behind it. I didn't like it. I think Loki is okay, but I really didn't like the, that, that show. I thought it was kind of smarmy. I just uh, me. I love soul, so I've 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 adapted twenty uh, two's behavior. Me, <laughs> me. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited about that. I'm I'm excited. I hope they do too because I love learning about new characters 
and uh, and I love a good story. So, Ava, hello. Thank you. Wishing you. She wishes everyone a good weekend. And uh, I, it's going to be cooler, so it will be a good weekend. Stephen, with things expanding in the world, are you considering getting a COVID-19 booster shot? If they offer it, absolutely I will. Right now, they're not officially offering it to me. <laughs> but that could change. So, uh, so if it does, I think I will. Especially since I would love everyone to get vaccinated. Or at least, when in doubt, wear a mask because uh, we need to get this horrible, horrible thing under control. This COVID nineteen, we got. We need to strike this villain down because this villain is finding ways of getting more, more and more people. And a vaccine is your Captain America shield. A vaccine is your claws of the Wolverine. Uh, the vaccine is. Um, the the superpower that you need to protect yourself from such an evil villain. And uh, I know that some of you may have medical issues, but those of you who have other issues, like they were saying religious and medical, relig many religions are coming out and saying, hey, 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 go get the vaccine. And I, I celebrate them for that. Um, this week, the Pope came, you know, the Pope stood out and said, get vaccinated. We all want the world to be a safe place so we can see each other again. And uh, we want you safe. And this, va this Delta virus is one that is attacking all of you who are not vaccinated and killing you. And I don't like it. I, I, don't, I don't like it. I don't like the way we are losing precious life. Life is a huge gift. And so I hope you will consider getting the vaccine. I know that there are people out there that have fears or they have concerns or they have beliefs. And if you are one of these people with said belief, concern, or fear, please try to find someone that you trust and respect that can help you to take you to the road to the vaccine. Um, you know, I under, I'm not going to insult your intelligence. It, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to do that because insulting a person doesn't make them want to do it. One of the more challenging animal rights advocates is PETA. Have you heard about them? They do things like spill blood on fur coats and stuff. This doesn't make a person say, hey, I'll protect animals. It makes them angry. And you don't, they, they, then they feel like, you know, I'm not, I'm going to wear fur because you're, you're not, you're not giving me the respect I deserve. You're not teaching and educating me. So that's why here I just want to say, and this is an obligation of being on social media. Yeah. Being on social media means you've got to talk to your followers and say, if you're not vaccines vaccinated, here's why I think you should be vaccinated so we can open up and protect each other and be safe. Okay. And when in doubt, wear a mask. That's what, that's the way I feel because I love and care about every human life and I want you to preserve it and protect yourself. So please consider it uh, and get someone you respect, which may not be me. But yes, the booster shot, I'm in. I absolutely uh, had no problems with the, uh, with the vaccine. And uh, it made me rest easier because I get to see my mom who's in a convalescent hospital now, and I get to see my father, both of them in the, the higher risk zones, over 80 years old. And I just don't want to be planning their funerals. I'd much rather be celebrating their life. Okay. So yeah, that's why I did it. Yeah. 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 Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday the 13th. Whoop, whoop. Hi, Bonnie. About to make some breakfast and hang out. Yeah, I have to make it in a shake because I can't, I don't have time to cook. I get up really early. And by this time, I am in full swing. So today, up at six o'clock because I had to pay a few bills, went online, paid a few bills, uh, made the shakes for my husband and I, put his shake in the refrigerator because he has a doctor's appointment. So he had to go to the doctor's appointment and then come back just to check up. They, they, they worked, they, they, we, they saw us both. Uh, before, and they just wanted to take a look and make sure he's healing well. Yay, good, oopie. Uh, there's that. 
uh, also wanted to make sure that uh, certain things were in alignment that I needed to do, planned out my day. I always make a list of what I need to do today and, uh, you know, stuff like that stuff like that. We are sharing a vehicle because we took both cars in and one of the cars has major stuff to be done. Er, price tag. But like my husband says, it's less expensive than buying another car. So that's the way to look at it. It's just, you know, say, yay, you know? So uh, I'm glad you're here, Bonnie. I'm glad you're hanging out and whoopee. Woo-hoo. Jacob says, uh, are you talking about the Muppet Mas Masterpiece the Theater VHS? No, no, no. I think that one's later. But uh, uh, it could be. I have to look at mine. Mine's somewhere. Uh, but uh, if you see a goofy horse when you play it, if you see a goofy horse bouncing around, uh, one of the uh, numbers that we do is got to get that name, got to get that name, got to get that name. We got to get it, got to get that name, got to get that name, got to get that. We got to get it. We got to get that name. We've got to get that name. That we did all together <laughs> with us, with Frank Oz and and uh, and uh, J uh, Jim Henson and Brian Henson. Brian did the little dancing weasel. Have you ever seen him do that? So cute. Anyway, I enjoyed that. Just got to be with the Muppet guys, and I love being with the Muppet guys. That's my favorite thing, Jacob, is being with the Muppet. The original Muppet crew is always fun and, and joyful to be around them. Uh, Baby was my mom's favorite, says Melissa. Uh, she would yell, not the mama, and pretend to hit dad on the head. <laughs> okay, that's a new one, Melissa. That's funny. Um, at the screening. When you do a new series or a new movie, a lot of times they will have a special screening for cast and crew. And we did that for Dinosaurs, uh, the TV show. And the first show, uh, our producer, Michael Jacobs, had his little boy with him and he's on his shoulders. And the little boy was doing just that. Not the mama, not the mama, not the mama. We hadn't even seen the first uh, episode or the first cut, which is a bit of a clip show. And uh, uh, his son had obviously seen it a lot, you know, because Michael is like, why did we come up with that phrase? You know. <laughs> but it was cute. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if Michael thought it was cute. And I don't know if your dad thought that was cute. But uh, kids did. <laughs> Go figure. Kids liked it. Thank you, Melissa. Cheryl says current due date is February. <gasps> no. <gasps> oh, you know, that's my favorite date in February because that's my husband's birthday. It's also a member of the 21 Club. Okay, so my birthday is June 21st. My husband's birthday is February 21st. And I have friends from all over the world who, if their birthday is on the 21st, we call it the 21 Club because the 21st is kind of a date that seems to be, I mean, you could call it the 20 Club if it was the 20th, you could call it the 19th, but we call it the 21 Club because there were so many of my friends that birthday was on the 21st of any given month. And so, yay, Cheryl, you got to keep me posted, especially if your child is born on my husband's birthday. Favorite day in the year for me, love of my life's birthday. Uh, it's a great, it's a, it's a great birthday. Uh, you know, should you have a boy or a girl? Uh, that is someone who's always going to have your back. February 21st, a real pillar of strength and uh, a go-getter. They always help you when you're down pick you up, dust you off. If you can't do it yourself, uh, February 21st is a great day. I'm so glad you said that because that is my favorite day of the month. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, Jacob says, going to Disney World at the end of the month, uh, what places do you recommend we check out? Um, Muppet 3D Theater. Because you just said you like it. So Muppet 3D Theater. Walt Disney World is the only place Jacob left, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, those of you who know Disney better than me, and there you're out there, uh, <laughs> uh, to see Muppet 3D Theater. In fact, uh, just before the pandemic lockdown, two of my really good friends, Johnny Johnston and Krista Joy, took me to Walt Disney World 
And the goal they wanted to, for me was to uh, get me to see the difference between Walt Disney World's Galaxy's Edge, because I told you I was a Star Wars nut, and Disneyland's Galaxy's Edge. And while we were making our way to Galaxy's Edge, I saw Muppet 3D Theater and just about passed out. Because here in California, it's gone. There's no way to see it. And I was so excited to see it because I did that with Jim Henson, with Frank Oz, with the Muppet Group. And uh, it's a wonderful memory in my heart. I also programmed the penguins with uh, uh, the actual audio animatronic penguins at Imagineering with my friend Bruce Lenoyle and um, Frank Oz popped in. We also entertained... Uh, we did what's called the dog and pony before the, the show was actually built. Uh, executives or shareholders would come in from Disney corporate and, and all over. And we would actually, we had a set, uh, a mock set built up in one of the buildings at Imagineering. And, and I would do everything from Bean Bunny to uh, a penguin to Sweetums. I actually got to play Sweetums sometime. And I really, really, really enjoyed that because my good friend, John, Hen Hens John Henson, rest his soul, uh, 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 Brian's brother and, you know, uh, Jim's son who passed away, uh, he he uh, always played Sweetums and he is a, he was a, a real sweet guy and uh, just just a good memory to me. So that would, Jacob, I'd say, do not pass go, don't collect $200 and go and see that for sure. But that's because you like the Muppets. And then they have a tiny little store, but the store is cool. So go into the store and grab yourself a Muppet thing because uh, they've got, I got a t-shirt and I really, I, I to this, it's I just love it. So, um, so that's what I would recommend when you go there. Also, if you're going to be doing all of the lands, if you're going to go to Animal Kingdom, um, Pandora is a bit challenging to get in. It's, it's a long line, but maybe with appointments, it's not so long anymore. I was there. There were no appointments, but you know now Walt Disney World, Disneyland, all of them are bringing you in by appointments. So you might be able to get in on the ride. That's a great ride. Uh, I was motion sick. Um, I get motion sick, but I didn't on Pandora. And I think it's because you are sitting atop a dragon. You can feel it breathing and moving and twisting with you. And my it, that was enough to fool my brain like I was on a real dragon. So I really enjoyed that. And uh, eat at the Yak and Yeti, which is my favorite restaurant in the in 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 the park. I love Yak and Yeti. It is in Animal Kingdom. Um, fresh, wholesome ingredients, just delicious. And if you're someone who likes a fresh, cool cocktail on a very hot day, Yak and Yeti is your place. So uh, that's just a couple of places. Epcot is always awesome. Go through the pavilion uh, uh, and travel the world. Uh, in Epcot, go to, you know, go to Japan and speak with the Japanese, go to France and speak with the French, go to Norway, speak with the Norwegians, because everyone there is from their, the, the country that is represented at Epcot's uh, pavilion. So, so please go do that. That is my favorite place. If I'm going to go one place, it's Epcot. That is my favorite, 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 favorite part. So um, I'm sure others can recommend things on here. And if you want to, guys, feel free to post in the comments your favorite thing. But uh, for Walt Disney World and uh, and have a good time and share with us what you discovered and what you like, because it's all super, super fun. It's a fun place to be. It's a huge place to be. So uh, good for you. Good for you. Last Monday, happy birthday, belated. Whoop, 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 whoop. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jacob. Happy birthday to you, belated. <laughs> See what happens? The rest of you are like, what? Just tell me your birthday. Hi, Cheryl. I'm personally okay with the look of Captain Carter. Captain America is super soldier after all. So I think she needs a look a little extra muscular to fit the part as the first super soldier. You have made a great, I'm so glad I asked you that question, Cheryl, because I think that is a really good point. She is a super soldier. 
Super soldiers are going to look different, aren't they? Yeah. I liked the story. I did. And I'm I'm particular. But uh, like you, Cheryl, I thought it was good. So uh, I love the way you, you pointed that out because that that's that's a good point. Yes, my pre-order book. David Lewis, brilliant question. The pre-order books come signed. And what the author and I are trying so hard to do is to get you both signatures, but we're not sure if we can guarantee that. Now, let me also say the pre-order price is good till September 10th at midnight. Why? Because the books are going to be delivered to me, see how positive I'm speaking, in September, early September, so I can have them ready for the show and sale. Now, you can go to the Disney Anna show and sale in Anaheim if you happen to be in the area, but they will be $20, okay? So save yourself a couple bucks and pick them up at the Disney Anna fan club. Why? Because I'd like the pre-sale to be where you buy most of your books, which is why I'm giving you this yummy discount. It allows me to know how many of you want it and how many you want. So this is a way to do it early so I can kind of gauge. It's our first book. So rather than guess, you help us determine how many books we need, which is why I do this fabulous pre-sale price. It's a beautiful book and well worth $22.95 autographed by two people. Maybe a sketch, I'm just saying. Uh, but the point is that it's it's a great little book. It's a fabulous little book. Hardbound, made in the USA, stitched, so it's not going to fall apart after your kids look at it or you look at it after a while. And yes, to answer the question, David, absolutely, they're going to be autographed by myself. For sure. Because she is on the East Coast, we just got to see what we can do for her to sign it on the East Coast. But if she doesn't, and then you happen to be on the East Coast, you can uh, go see her and she will sign it for you. And vice versa, if you're on the East Coast and I'm not over there and you happen to come to the West Coast, just give me a shout out and say, I brought my pumpkin book with me. Can you sign it? So uh, you can make it an excursion. Um, I did this. Many of you have heard of the show Top Chef, where many chefs compete. And I went, I used that book that they uh, printed to go meet the master chefs. So I went all around and had the master chef sign it. So it's a fun thing to do. So however it happens, we got you covered. And uh, uh, yeah, if you've bought the book and you say, please sign it, you got it. You know, now until the end of time, as long as we're alive, you got it. Okay. All right. So thank you for that question, David. That is a good one. And again, you go to my website. Look at the words new book in the bar upset. Click on that. Push that yellow button. If you want more than 10, 10 or more, I can give you a deal. We have to talk about it. Okay. May not be a huge deal. $18 is an incredible deal. But like I said, I'll cut you some slack. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll talk about it. We will talk about it. It'll be something. Okay. But yeah, 10, 10, 10 or more. You want to give them to your school or you want to, you know, whatever. And uh, if you want to do a virtual reading of the book in September or later, we can set something up like that too. I'm more than happy to read it and show the pictures virtually if you have a classroom or you want to have it, you know. So hit me up. We'll talk. Okay. Uh, Jacob says, I always loved how Jim all mixed different types of puppetry. I know. Brilliant, eh? Uh, a great, great example of that is jungle what did you say jug band yes that was cute i did see this i just saw it because somebody on this channel told me about it and then sent me i think it was greg greason who did that my friend greg i totally recommend you see it this christmas it's on youtube no i think greg already clicked it and it's very cute it's very very sweet but in dinosaurs we did the same thing there is an episode in dinosaurs the tv show and you can see it on disney plus where I am a marionette, I, they, they use my marionette skills in what sexual harass meant. That's the episode, what sexual harass meant. I'm trying to see if it'll, come on, come on. 
that wants me to do the code. It's just being insistent to me. Do the code, do the code. But yes, it's called What Sexual Hair Is Meant. And um, it's uh, it has me up in a scaffolding and I'm doing uh, marionette. I'm pulling strings where there's hand puppets and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, we did all kinds of wild stuff on that show. It was really fun. So I'm with you and I did see that. It's very cute. Uh, what's your favorite part about sculpting? It's three-dimensional, Shelby. <laughs> You're probably saying, what does that mean? But I'm learning now to draw better. I draw well. But I, 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 up until now, I've needed a model. And up until now, I've, uh, I've always struggled with a two-dimensional piece of paper. So, for example, here you have a two-dimensional piece of paper. It's flat, yet you have to draw something that is three-dimensional. Okay? In sculpting, what I love about sculpting is that when I want to sculpt the right side, I simply sculpt the right side. And when I want to sculpt the other side, well, I guess this is my left side, depending on how you're looking. Uh, if I want to sculpt the right side, I sculpt the right side. If I want to sculpt the left side, I sculpt the left side. If I want to sculpt the face, I sculpt the face. If I want to sculpt the back, I sculpt the back. In three dimensions, I just turn it around and sculpt it, right? But in drawing, if you want to do a three-quarter quarter view or a powerful view or comic book view, you've got to fit all of that perspective, if you will, that that foreshadowing, foreshortening on a two-dimensional piece of paper. And many people who draw say they like drawing because they don't have to draw the back. So we love it for different reasons. But as a sculptor, I love being able to sculpt all the way around. If you take this cute little marshmallow man that Nate Singleton sent me, I just turn him and sculpt this angle, this angle, this angle, sculpt the whole thing. And that's what I love about sculpting as opposed to if it's three quarter view, trying to draw this three quarter look on a flat piece of paper. I'm getting so much better because uh, the pandemic hit and I decided to take a class in drawing with perspective and my uh, instructor, is uh, helping me to learn how to do that better. So um, here is an example of the perspective illustrations that I've done. The interesting thing about these is they are straight ink. So here you see the metal. You can see how it's a side view. This is a three quarter somewhat aerial view. This is what I'm talking about. I'd rather do in sculpture than trying to do it in, uh, in drawing, but I'm getting better. I'm getting so much better that, uh, yeah, I'm real, I'm real I'm moving my cup. I'm real happy about it. And, uh, uh, he had me do a drawing of uh, uh, he had me do a project, a mid training project, which is this one with the fish. Now here uh, is several uh, hurdles that I had had challenges with before. And that is uh, a dimensional look to the fish. You know, you can see these two eyes, which is something I just sculpt and, and some of the looks of these side fish you see here. Um, the teeth, look, you know, you got inside teeth, outside teeth, got a three-quarter teeth with this bottom one down here. You have a light source, and the painting is watercolor. So straight ink to the paper, no penciling beforehand. He's about, oops, wrong one. Look, my table. <laughs> um, he makes you draw in straight ink. You put ink to the paper, which means you have to, in your brain, lay out the drawing before you even put ink to the paper. And that's been a new training, and I really enjoyed it. But I like sculpting because when I want to do it in a, you know, I just turn it. <laughs> that's what I like about it. Yeah. I also like sculpting really tiny, and that's because I'm insane. But I've been doing more. Like right now, I'm going to do the Rolly Crump chest set, and they're going to the pieces are going to be like this. The 
the pond is going to be like this. And then the pieces are going to be like maybe that. They're going to be there. It's a big Jessa. But uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. The challenge with sculpting the Rolly Crump chess set, the uh, Museum of the, Weir of the Weird, if you will, is that, um, do I have my paper here? Yeah, here it is. This is the chess set. These are the figures. And these were designed by, this is the silhouettes. But this will be the whole chess set. The challenge is, as you see this guy up here, and let me take you to the table shot. The challenge is that see how fragile this guy is? So I can't really make this a chess piece because this would break like that, you know? And uh, I'll give you a little more light on the subject. This would snap. So we don't want to snap it in case you really want to play with the chess set. But they get more fragile. Look at the delicate bit of this. The two delicate legs here. Look at this delicate. Look at the Candleman delicate. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking at them going, woohoo, Buana. Um, we want to make sure that they, uh, I do them justice. So I've got to change them into, I've got to morph them into a chess set one can actually play with. Will you do it as a collector? Maybe, maybe not. But if you choose to do it as a collector, you should be able to do it as a collector. Yes? Yes. It's a chess set. You should be able to play it without damaging it, especially if it's going to cost a bit, a few bucks. If your investment's going to be pretty high, I need it to be durable so that if you want to play chess with it, you can. That's the that's my goal. Um, I created a um, a piece called. Let me see if I can find it for you. Oh, mm. not so sure I'm going to be able to find it, but let's just be positive that it might be in here that I can show you. Yeah, I created a piece called the uh, puzzle map for the last Disney Anna show in 2001. And uh, this is my insane sculpting. If I zoom in on it, all of this is done very, very detailed based on a children's wood puzzle and offered at an event. It is Disneyland from the air. All of my favorite attractions done in what we call wax. Uh, I will be teaching courses on this in the future. I've, I'm just setting up. I got a new camera and I'm working to set it all up and to get it going, but it's going to take me some time. Can't do everything. Wish I had a prehensile tail. Would love to get them all done now and you guys could, could join them. But at this point, they're in the works. But you can see how this piece here is based on a children's puzzle. All of these come out. I want you to be able to pull them out and put them in if you want, which means that they are made in such a way that a lot of this stuff won't chip and break. So uh, that's what I'm talking about when it comes to the chess set. I need to make it uh, workable. I need to make it so that it does what it says it's going to do. If it says it's a chess set, and I looked at many chess sets that just disregarded this and made them, and I thought, how many of these cost hundreds of dollars and you broke them the very first time you even pulled them out of the box or whatever? That just makes me a bit crazy. So so that's one of the reasons that I, that I do that. Uh Let's see. So uh, that is my favorite part about sculpting, Shelby, and thank you for asking. Jacob says, Roku has a Carol Burnett show channel. Love it. Check check that out. Love the family skits. So funny. Love Mama's family. Of course, Mama's family's great, isn't it? I used to do a lot of improv and perform like they do, and and so it, it touches me. And uh, Michael Luzzi probably is always on the Carol Burnett channel because he's personal friends with, with Carol and uh, has been for years. So... Uh, I will do that. The Carol Burnett channel. It sounds wonderful. I'll laugh. I have all the DVDs of Carol Burnett too. And why do I recommend you get DVDs? Just in case any of the streaming channels decide to pull what you love off and you can't view it again, you have a DVD of it. And also, 
if your budget gets tired of doing so many a la carte that you're paying a hundred dollars a month and you decide to cut back, you can always watch it on your DVD player. Case in point, I love Downton Abbey. It took a long time for me to see Downton Abbey. I think I just got introduced to Downton Abbey. I'd heard about it and how wonderful it was, but I actually sat down and watched it on my birthday in June of this year. True story. Had never seen an episode and I fell in love with it. And uh, on Amazon, I saw that there was a huge bargain uh, of DVDs where I could get all the shit, all the, all the, all the seasons. There's the word I was looking for. Get all the seasons plus the movie they made for 30 bucks. And it is a collector's edition. Usually, I guess when the collector's editions came out, they were like 90 some dollars. So you can go through and when a sale comes on something that's really important to you, you can hit that button and get that launched and get that done. So uh, I'm building my DVD collection and making sure I have a DVD player to use it so that I can watch it when I want to watch it, not when the streaming, if the streaming should eliminate it, I still have it. So, so it's just a, a little hack that uh, I'm going to tell you about. But uh, like Jacob says, I, but that's what I did. I got all the Carol Burnett's so I could watch them as the first uh, Star Trek, which is, you know, uh, Leonard Nimoy and, Excuse me, and William Shatner, that's my favorite one. So I have that collector set too. Uh, and that way you can just pull them out and watch them at your leisure as opposed to someone else. And it, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but I'm sure you've had it where you've watched a channel and you go to click on something that you like and it's gone. And you go, but it, it, it. like Netflix used to have Doc Martin. I love Doc Martin. Netflix, Netflix used to have Doc Martin, as did Prime have Doc Martin, but all of a sudden on Netflix, poof, it was gone. So I was like, well, hey, that's not fun. So uh, so that's why I have Doc Martin too. <laughs> and then maybe your budget. Just one day you say, uh, I've got too, too many channels that I'm paying for month to month because more and more and more are going a la carte. You know, instead of being like a direct TV, a Netflix or a Prime, Disney's got their own channel. Apple's working on their own channel. NBC's working on their own channel, their own channel, their own channel, their own channel. Showtime, HBO, which were there for a long time. But as you can see, everybody's doing their own channel. And if there's a price to follow the said channel, then before you know it, you're spending a lot of money per month. So uh, you may not want to do that. And uh, this is a way to watch what you want to watch, when you want to watch it, and, you know. Also check with your public library because they have things, like in our case, we, uh, are, uh, we've got a library card. So Canopy, K-A-N-O-P-Y, allows you 10 movies to view per month for free, just for being a member of your public library. So there are free out there. You just got to find them. Okay. So, so another little hack, how did that all come from the Roku and you, Jacob, you sparked a thought. Aren't you special? Uh, Muppet Vision 3D and 3D film attraction located at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Yes. Had a subsequent incarnation, which opened at Disney California Adventure. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes, but it's no longer a California adventure. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, they got rid of it a long time ago. And I love the smocks that the cast members get to wear that have the Muppet Labs uh, logo on. Oh, so cool. Just so cool. So overall, just everything is fun. So that's why I recommend you check that out. Closed on, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So it's there at Walt Disney World, or at least it was before the pandemic. So uh, how watch the theme? Uh, let's see. Watch the theme park kids on YouTube. She's a little girl who's a Muppet lover and you would love her. Ah, it sounds cute. Theme park kids. Yeah, you can't help but love the Muppets, can you? And we, we did all kinds of things that were sort of Muppet you know, with Muppet people, different venues, different ideas, different things. And uh, uh, good for you for giving her a shout out. Thank you for the birthday song. You're an angel in disguise. Love you. Thank you, sweetheart. We need more Terry's. Thank you. We need more Jacobs. <laughs> uh, love, love. <laughs> 
Is Figment still at Epcot? Asked Stephen. We made the original puppet at Bob Baker's and worked on it there. Yes. Um, as far as I know, I don't know uh, if Figment the puppet is still there. Maybe someone else can address that in the comments. But they were talking about changing the look of Figment. The reason I know this is because a lot of people, I do these, uh, these sculptures called impressions. And my impression sculptures are kind of more, uh, people said they loved the movie, but they couldn't find Stitch who wasn't happy or angry. I'll use Stitch as an example. Stitch was either happy or angry. And um, Groot was always dancing or didn't look much like the character. Uh, this is just a couple of examples. Um, Jiminy Cricket was not in the hobo outfit. So I created the impressions line which uh, I created the impressions line so that you could, let's see if I've got them here. I'm, I'm just looking, I'm just looking, I'm just looking. I ah, can't find it. Whew. Never, you know, I'm going to have to just isolate these a little bit better, but uh, anyway, I'll see if I can find what I was talking about. Anyway, um, this is the stitch, for example, for the impressions line. Um, people asked for more of a, of a sweet melancholy stitch and, uh, he's little, he's about two and a half inches through tall, under three inches tall, and he's holding the book. A lot of times in the impressions line, I'm not necessarily going to do it exactly like the movie, but I'll get an impression of the character and then I will create that impression for people to collect. In the impressions line, they suggested Figment. And the reason they did is because they like the current classic Figment, not the new version of Figment, which is kind of coming out to look like, nobody's settled on it yet as far as I know, uh, Puff the Magic Dragon Figment. And people don't want figment to change. So they're asking me to do a classic figment, which I may do next year. I may sculpt that if enough people want it. A lot of people have been asking me if my one of my next impressions will be figment. And that's because they don't want to lose him. So to answer your question, uh, right now, I don't know if the puppet's in the park. They use him so much as a representative to Epcot. He's on pins and uh, he's on shirts, but he's, you know, they're not a lot of plush of figment, little plush of figment, but uh, as a character, they he's not really active in the parks, I'm told. I'm told. I'm told he's not really active in the parks. So this might be something that you can check out. And, um, and so figment is still in Epcot, maybe as a toy, a t-shirt, a button, a pin, etc. But as a character, I'm not so sure he's still there. I think this was a major concern of many people who love that little adorable purple dragon. Best advice, Jim Henson. Yeah, Jim Henson, the best. He is a, well, he was a love. That's all I'm going to say. He was a love. I think today's film, I think... No, I thank today's filmmakers could take notes from Jim about mixing different mediums to uh, give me 2D any day of the week. I know, right? I know, I know. See, CGI is uh, is uh, computer generated. And so I, I, I'll tell you where I like it. I like computer generated images when they're blended with practical, like in The Mandalorian uh, on Disney+. Plus. That's practical mixed with uh, CGI or computer generated. When it's all CG, it just looks fake to me. It looks too shallow. It looks too two-dimensional. It's too clean, not dirty enough. It doesn't feel real. But all they have to do is to push in a practical and it's amazing. So a perfect example of this, Jacob, is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean attraction in Shanghai Disneyland where it is a blending of practical effects, audio animatronic figures with CGI. So you get sort of the whole uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movie experience. 
It's really fun. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I did love it. And I wrote it probably when I was in Shanghai. I wrote it maybe three times, four times. And one time it broke down and I love it. I'm an artist and an Imagineer. So I loved when it broke down because then I could see how the components were laid out and came together once it was operating properly. Um, I didn't like the ride vehicle for uh, Shanghai because it looks like a cereal box that they just rip one side and put seats in. But that's because they want it to be like a theater. I think it seats 45 people in one of the boats. So it's a massive amount. But that's because China is such a massive country. Billions live in China. And so the park had to be able to sustain a million if they needed to. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. So that park is designed and laid out very differently from any other one because of the sheer mass of guests they could possibly have. Uh, but it is a, it's very, it's a very entertaining park to, um, to go see because it's different. Hong Kong Disneyland is another one I highly recommend. Hong Kong, and I know we're diverting from here, but, but it's just like you said, mixing different mediums. Many of these parks do... Uh, many of the parks show these examples, and Shanghai is one of them. Hong Kong is great because it is the only park that faces uh, east-west as opposed to north-south. All other parks have always done north-south. It does east-west because of the 500,000-year-old uh, feng shui. Not the bourgeois, fufu feng shui, but the deep, 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 historical feng shui it's a lot of it's a wonderful park and i think it kind of it works because you walk in and you feel relaxed lots of water elements just a very fun park to be in there and you really feel good in there so something with the feng shui there and they have some amazing amazing attractions and the castle i think uh maybe just finished because they had to it was pandemic there was a little challenge to finish some of the things they needed to finish but uh, uh, they gave him a bigger castle because it looked like a jewel box. But uh, it's a great little park. It's a great park. And and I took me. I didn't get to see all of it. People said it's so small you could see it in a day. Maybe that's you, but I could not. I, I, I loved facets of it. I loved Hong Kong. It was beautiful, a beautiful park. And uh, when you walk down Main Street, you think maybe you missed your plane because Hong Kong loved the original Disneyland that they duplicated it a little bit in Hong Kong. It has different things, but when you first go through, you think you might've missed your plane and you're in Anaheim and not in, uh, in Hong Kong. So it's pretty cool. But thank you for that question. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. And you're right. Cheryl says those chess pieces look wicked. Good luck with sculpting them. I know you, you'll do Raleigh Plaid. Thank you for that, Cheryl. Uh, this has been, you know, how something just eats at your skull. You're doing other things and it's just there going, well, that's my Rolly Crump chess set. Rolly, uh, Rolly and I have been wanting to do this for years. We actually met 15 to 20 years ago, and it was we came up with the chess set together. But uh, he wanted me to wait. So, like I said, I pulled out a drawer and put it in a drawer, and I left it there for later until it was ready. And about three, five years ago, I saw Rolly's exhibition at Oceanside Park in near San Diego here in California. And I sat with him and asked him if we could do the chess set. And he said, go for it. And we pulled it out. We took a look. We love it. And now um, I'm finally now getting to launch it. One thing happens to another. Travel, you know, life hits. But I did not, excuse me, pardon me. I did not want life to hit again. So in between the courses of life, it's on my agenda to do while I continue to deliver the hitchhiking ghosts. And speaking of the hitchhiking ghosts, if you're an adoptive parent of a set of hitchhiking ghosts and you're wondering where in the heck are they, uh, thank you for your patience. I love you. Feel free to reach out to me and ask me any questions you may have if you are concerned about them. They are safe. They are just delayed because we are having trouble getting the mechanism that goes up, the mechanisms that make them uh, ghostly light up. So uh, I, I am at, I can't, you know, it's important to just realize that many manufacturers are having this challenge and you got to exercise some patience. I thank you for exercising patience with me as I attempt to exercise patience 
uh, with them, but we, I really need them, but you can't push a person because then they could cut corners and you don't want them to cut corners. That means you get an inferior product and I no, 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 I don't allow that. But if you don't, don't feel like you can't speak to me, you know, if you want to talk to me and say, Hey, by the way, ghosty, ghosty, you know, then, then by far feel free to, to reach out. Okay. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, and, and I'll put you at ease, you know, I'll let you know your money is safe. I have not spent a dime of it, uh, until I invest in the ghosts that are going to go to you. Uh, none of it. I don't pay myself until after you guys orders are fulfilled. It's just my rule. So, uh, I really, really want you guys to have these many people will tell you they're worth the wait who have gotten them. So hang in there and I love you guys and they will come. And once they're done, We'll do another uh, impression, which I'm hoping to do later this year, of the Cheshire Cat. So if you like the Cheshire Cat, uh, that will be coming later in the year. Hopefully hit the ground for sale, uh, if not by Christmas, by just after Christmas. And we'll do the pre-sale so you can, we'll do a certificate if you want to do it as a Christmas gift. But we will see. I'm not going to make any promises until my ghosts are on their way and in the hot little hands of all of you adoptive parents who've been waiting so patiently. So thank you for that. And thank you, Cheryl, for saying, yeah, I'll, I'll show you, give you guys little glimpses of it. Yeah, I'll be, I'll show you little peeks of it. Of course I will. Um, are they really changing Splash to Princess and the Frog or is it just a rumor? Uh, I don't know. I, I think, I th let's take a look at this a little differently. And I've said that before. And Jacob, you bring up a really good question. Let's just, just, just say, what if you think Splash is getting a little old and tired? I mean, after all, the Splash Mountain, uh, uh, lay down my burdens down by the riverside, those characters all came from America Sings attraction, which was in Tomorrowland. You guys remember that? So they wanted to repurpose those characters in a cool ride, and they came up with a, with uh, Splash Mountain. And that's cool. I thought they did great. I think, you know, smart thinking, Imagineers. Um, but maybe you're watching it and you're like, I would love to see something a little bit different, change it up a little bit. So maybe they could change it up and do something different because the ride is a bit tired as opposed to PC. Because the challenge with doing Princess and a Frog is that there are other groups. Remember, I told you, you can't please everybody who might get seriously angry if you pull out all of Princess and the Frog. Um, in a word, voodoo. You do, I do. How do you feel about voodoo? Especially if you're extremely religious, you may not be liking the voodoo part, okay? So this is what I'm talking about. It's just, you know, Disney has so many, we as people who create product for you have so many hoops we have to jump through. And this is something that they've got to consider. So I don't know if it's that easy of a shift, but I will say they could consider putting something in there that could be really, really cool and really, really exciting. And on the Patreon page, my patrons, my tribe came up with, how about Moana? Because you got the water, you got the ride vehicle, you can switch out the character. It's a lot of fun, but I'd be interested in what you think. So to answer your question, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, it might be fun to change it up a little bit, but not to be PC because a lot of people are saying the Jungle Cruise just is kind of meh now that they've PC'd it out. They're just kind of like meh, you know? And I don't want people to think that Jungle Cruise is meh. It was my favorite ride when I was a kid. I love, I love animals and I love sculpting animals and there they were. Blaine Gibson sculpted amazing animals and scenes. So, um, and my favorite scene was the uh, the guy who was on the safari with his two guides and the rhinos got him. I love that. I love that. And uh, if they're going to change that, and I don't quite understand why, because he is a person of color and many of the guides in an African safari are black. 
So I, I, you know, and if you're in India, you're looking for creatures there, they're going to be from India or Indian. So I, you see what I mean? My view is different. It's different. Yeah, it's different. So I, I like the Jungle Cruise the way it was. So, uh, so I don't know. But uh, I hope if they change it, they do it with, with with thought and with strong consideration, as I know Imagineers do, because I are one. Can you believe it's almost Christmas? I know, right? <laughs> it's almost Thanksgiving. But more importantly, it's almost Halloween. Woohoo! <laughs> it is almost Halloween. Yay, 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 yay. Well, guys, here we are, the weekend, and I want to wish you all an amazing and happy weekend. We did a wonderful record today at an hour and a half. I'm working my way down to an hour maybe for the Ask Me Anything, uh, mainly because I know you want to get out and about and enjoy the weather. Many of you have been cooped up and uh, you want to go out and breathe the air, swim in the ocean, swim in a pool, do something fun with family, maybe even hug someone. Uh, when in doubt, wear a mask, be safe, be careful. And uh, I'm thinking about you, you know? We, we, we've been inside for a very long time, and I totally get why you would want to be uh, outside enjoying this beautiful weather. So I hope you do, and I hope it continues. And uh, please enjoy. Thank you, Cheryl. And visiting with you was so nice as well. You guys be cool. Do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a lot better. So what does this mean? If you're depressed, think about doing something nice. It doesn't always have to cost money. It can be as simple as buying, if it costs money, the person behind you in the Starbucks line, pick up their coffee order. Buy them a cup of coffee. Buy them a dozen donuts if you're in line. But if you don't want to buy them, how about someone you haven't talked to in a while? Ring them up on the phone and say hello. I'm sure it will make their day. And surprisingly enough, it'll make yours as well. So do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel so much better. You've done it for me today. I love you. Hugs. Post in the comments. I'll look. do my best to read them. And I will see you Monday. Be well, everybody's